Hello, I'm Graham and welcome to Fosway Classic Car Workshop. This isn't a professional workshop, it's where classic car enthusiasts like myself like to get hands-on working on our cars. It started off four years ago with one workshop and it's now three workshops and a classic car storage unit. And if you'd like to join me, I was going to give you a tour around and have a look at some of the interesting car projects that we've got in here because they are many and varied, there's about 35 cars in total. It was this former cattle shed that I went to see in July 2018. A friend at work knew of another colleague who was renting it, and as luck would have it, he was just about to move out. I needed somewhere better for my two old jags, having moved them from a double garage to a barn, and when that was sold, onto my new driveway. As you can probably imagine, this isn't an ideal setup. So when I found this barn, I bought the equipment, including the two post lift, from the previous tenant and set about painting the floor and walls with help from one of my new tenants. Soon the barn became a full workshop with other project cars and I could use any excess rent to get more equipment that we could all benefit from. In spring 2019 another former cattle shed became available which after a clean and paint became a storage only unit. The following year in March 2020 I took on the unit next door. After opening up the doorway and removing the staircase to the mezzanine and the same paint treatment, there was now space for six to seven project cars and a couple of storage spots. In the summer of 2021, the fourth and final unit became available. A former milking parlour, I had to knock down walls and fit decent lighting and power all round. After a good paint, the first car in was my current project my brother's 1967 Jaguar E-Type Coupe. A nice little classic car restoration community has emerged, and I've completed my first restoration using a spray booth I built in the original workshop. I've also continued to add to and upgrade the equipment available for everyone to share. It's rare to find some way you can do this, and I really enjoy seeing the projects develop. So let's take a look. This is Unit 5, it was the first workshop that I took on here. Down this end of the workshop, I've got my 1963 Jaguar Mark 10 up in the air, and that's my next big restoration project. Underneath it, we've got an early modern Jaguar S-Type. The next car along was a Beetle that was in storage over in Germany for 15 years. And uh, here are the wings that um, have been resprayed in this unit. But that car is nearly ready, so it's uh, back together as one piece now. And hopefully we'll be seeing it driving again in 2023. As we come round, We've got James's two cars, so he's into his Opals. This is a 1969 Opal GT. It's in really lovely condition. It's a bit like a miniature Corvette, Corvette Stingray. And um, we'll definitely uh, be featuring this one on because it's uh, such a lovely looking car. Uh, with its quirky pop-up headlamps, you pull a cable and these actually flip around that way. So a really rare car in the UK because it's left-hand drive only, so there's only a few of these around. Then on its side, on the rollover jig, is uh, a Manta A. So James is currently working on the underside of that because it's got a fair bit of uh, rust dealing doing. And alongside it is the most wacky project that we've got in the whole of uh, Fosway Classic Car Workshop, which is Rob's BMW 2002. He's getting ready for the circuit with a Honda S2000 engine. We'll definitely be featuring this one later as well because he's, he's got it running now, but he's um, there's still a fair bit of preparation to do to get it um, so that you can actually safely drive it. Next we have Chris's car. So this is um, his first car actually, which is a Volvo 340 saloon. But he's fitted a Renault uh, Clio 16 valve engine, not a Williams 16 valve engine, but it's still a two litre 16 valve engine. And uh, he's, this is kind of his next project, but uh, he's got one of the, the first success stories actually out of this venture when he took a Suzuki SJ that's been off the road for 17 years. His grandfather owned it and that was um, a lot of welding and a lot of work, but he's done the, the NC500 with his roof tent in that. So it's a, a definitely a car that we're going to be featuring here as well. This is unit three. This is a workshop I haven't featured on this channel before. So at the front of the unit, we've actually got some cars in storage. There's a really nice 59 plate Porsche Boxster, which uh, my friend Graham has modified. He does use it for summer use, but he also does track days in it. Lovely car. This one is Ryan's 
Mark II Ford Fiesta, which he got a two litre ZTEC engine in. Him and his dad are very big um, car buffs. His dad's got the Ford Anglia next door. So um, that's a bit of a sleeper. And then we've got one of five Golf GTI Mark IIs. So this one's recently moved in. Uh, I need to check with um, the owner, Ben, what he's uh, planning on doing with it. I'm sure he's told me before and I can't quite remember. And then we get to the kind of inner sanctum underneath the mezzanine here where uh, the other four are. So it's fascinating talking to these guys. It's a bit like the scene of Fast and Furious for, uh, for me in here. So uh, Josh and his friend Tom have got these two lovely examples of the Mark II Golf GTI. Um, they were doing the, the four-cylinder turbo and the VR6 thing at first, uh, whereas um, Josh is now going for the VR6 turbo. You can see the massive turbo on that box there. Roll cages, and uh, they do a great job working on these cars. In this uh, polythene bay here, Dan has got another Mark II Golf, you can see in very much a uh, state of work in progress. So this one is a full strip down and rebuild, but he's already got a really nice Mark II Golf GTI as well. So this is uh, quite a passion project uh, for him. Down at this end, we've got a bit more of a serious project again. So this is another Mark II Golf GTI, you can see underneath the, uh, the, the dirt just about, but this one is obviously a fairly long-term project, but it's in the right unit. In the corner is a solitary Peugeot 309 GTI. Now this one is a donor shell for an ex-Richard Burns rally car. So Chris works in the motorsport industry. You can probably tell by the piles of wheels and tires and stuff like that. Uh, I'm hoping in 2023, we're gonna see more of uh, this project under development. And it looks like the, uh, the marks here is where he's uh, measuring up to put this great big pod of lamps on the head, on the bonnet. So uh, I hope to be taken out in that one day. Finally, we've got a very nice looking Subaru Impreza Turbo. So uh, I don't know uh, too much about the details of this one, but basically the plan is with these, um, if the owners are kind enough to feature them. So hopefully we'll get uh, Josh and Tom's GTIs and any of the others that are up and running alongside each other and we can do a bit of a feature special with them and their cars. So as we come back into unit two here, this is actually the most recent of the units and it used to be a milking parlor back in the day. So when I first took on the unit, there were two walls that needed knocking down and the farmer very kindly let me reverse his forklift truck into them to knock them down. It's just about wide enough for two cars um, across the length of it and uh, it's now a decent workshop. So to show what we've got here, we've got a um, recently re-imported Japanese uh, Jaguar XJS. This is a straight six version, not a V12, but in really, really nice condition having come from Japan and uh, Matt's a uh, very proud owner of this one. As a complete contrast in terms of project, there's this Ford Anglia 100E. If you come a bit closer, you can really see that uh, there's a fair bit of work required on this. The floors need a lot of work and actually getting it onto this rollover jig here was a bit of a challenge because basically it kept on crumbling every single time uh, they tried to mount it. But I think they're just about there now. But uh, you can see it's quite crusty, but really gives uh, an insight into the, the level of work that people take on here. So Richard's got his work cut out for that. We then move down to this next one. Now this is at the other end of the scale. I've featured this one in a film already. Robin's 1955 Ford Thunderbird here is getting much closer to being uh, completed. It's, it runs now, he's recently put this front bumper back on and um, it looks spectacular. So I'm really looking forward to hearing that and hopefully being taken for a spin in it. So this will feature again on this channel. So if you'd like to watch that, please tune in. And uh, if you'd like to subscribe, of course, please do. By way of contrast, we've then got this Mazda MX-5. Now this one, um, as all Mazdas tend to need, needs work along the sills, but this one's going to have a V6 Mazda engine put in to replace the four cylinder that's uh, up there. And I think he's got plans to turn it into a bit of a um, hard top coupe look. So uh, again, we'll feature this one as it comes through. John's very happy to, uh, to talk to us about this. Right, moving further down. So you can probably tell by the car cover, this is a Triumph Stag. So this one is rods in a lovely 1970s yellow colour, um, flying banana. Um, I've heard this running and it's the original three litre V8. It's not a Rover uh, V8 at all. So um, that's good to hear that it's got its original Triumph engine. It really does sound lovely. So hopefully we can feature this one at some point. 
Now, under this one, and uh, I've been doing all of my episodes on the 1967 E-Type of my brothers uh, in the end of the workshop there, but under here is another 1967 E-Type. Um, just lift the back here. Everyone's given me permission, so hopefully it's okay. We have the tail end of a willow green E-Type coupe. And so we'll see more of this later, but the weird coincidence with this car is it was only 71 VINs apart from my brother's car. So they were both in the factory at Browns Lane together back in 1967, which is an amazing coincidence. This car's been off the road for about 20 years and I uh, trailered it over from uh, Kenilworth uh, about a year ago when uh, this workshop first came into existence. And Martin, who's got a fascinating Jaguar story himself, having been a chief engineer at the company, is recommissioning his car, which he's owned for many years. The engine's out at the front here, and um, the reason for all of this polytunnel is that he's going to be respraying the engine bay. So uh, we have a quick look at the work that's been going on here. So here we've got the engine on the stand upside down. And then if we look into here, we can actually see the engine bay that Martin's been flatting back, ready to go back to its original willow green color. So hopefully we'll be able to feature more progress. And as Martin has uh, said, he's very happy to talk to me about his uh, fascinating career at Jaguar as well. And then we get to my workshop space. So this is where my brother's car is being done currently. In time, I'm going to bring in my Mark 10, which will be my next big project. And that car's next door, as we've already seen. In addition to some films about the projects you've seen in the various workshops here, I'm also going to be doing some side projects on car related items, such as this Champion spark plug tester. This thing works fine, but it's a bit cosmetically poor, so I'm hoping to restore that as well. I've also got some additional stuff that I'll be showing you. I hope you've enjoyed the tour of the workshops, and thank you for watching. Please join me again.